titled, um, informally I would title it, <clears throat> kind of like CPCTC, <clears throat> only instead of talking about congruent triangles, we're now going to be talking about similar triangles. And because we need to treat angles and sides differently in similar triangles, then we have CA and CS. Again, the A stands for angles, and this stands for sides. Now, you don't have to use these abbreviations that I'm using, um, but feel free. So the corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. And the corresponding sides of similar triangles are not congruent, but rather proportional. Now again, you don't have to use those acronyms. You can just say corresponding angles and similar triangles are congruent. And corresponding sides and similar triangles. I don't know why I abbreviated SIM. We have a symbol for that, don't we? Are corresponding. All right, so again, angle M and angle N are congruent because of CASTC and AB, A is to B as D is to C. All right, so these are two conclusions we can make based upon the statement that they're similar. Yes? All right, here's how this works in a proof. If you're given, say two lines are parallel, so let's mark those. Can you show that this statement is true? Now, when we look at the statement, we go, what? We've never talked about that. Like, when is that true? But if we think about it for a moment, that is the extremes and the means of a proportion. So our idea here is that we need to somehow use some sort of similarity theorem to show the two triangles are similar. Then we will deduce from the similarity that the proportions are true. All right. And I would also take note that it helps sometimes to not always think forward, but to think backwards. Meaning, don't start with the given, start with the proof. Okay? So, in light of that, there's two ways that you could go with this. Yes? So, say we had AB over BD. Then what would be the proportion on the other side? Well, you can see the AC is upstairs and the CE would come downstairs. So that's one way of setting up the proportion before that proof line. Now option B is you could say, well, no, I'm not going to do it that particular method. Instead, I am going to move AC over there. In which case then the BD stays up there and the CE goes down here. Yeah, so this is kind of in the line before the last line. Now that sometimes helps you in determining the triangles. So if I look over here and I see AB and I see AD, okay those are two opposing sides, or I could say AB is to AC. Oh, I like that latter one, right? So this is the one that I'm going to choose to go for because I like the two sides to be the corresponding sides. All right. So then how am I going to, what similarity theorem am I going to use in this case? Um, always search for this one because this is by far the easiest. It only uses two angles and I think in this case we are good to go because angle A is shared between the triangles and then angle B and angle C are corresponding angles, yes? So I think we're set.
setting that up. Line one, um, again, we have the given. Line two, angle A is congruent to angle A, and that would be the reflexive property. I wonder how many times we've used that over the course of this year. Number three. So I've got one of the two angles. Now i got to get the second angle. And again, angle A, B, D. I could have named those with numbers to make myself my life a little bit easier. And A, C, E are congruent. And that's the corresponding angles theorem line 4 those two triangles ABD now be careful here's I'm going to slow down because there's a lot of kids that make a mistake and they put congruent these are not congruent these are similar to ACE And this is because we have the angle-angle similarity theorem. Line 5, because the triangles are now similar, we can now go back and use and set up the sides. Right? Corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So I'm now going to set up this one here. Okay, AB over AC. And BD 